the Milwaukee Bucks are one of the hottest teams in the early goings of the NBA season, galloping wildly out to a 10-3 start, recently snagging some impressive road wins against the Warriors and the surging Denver Nuggets. Today I'd like to take a look at just what exactly the hell is going on with these Milwaukee Bucks, and if you're not interested in that, go on, get out of here. Go on now, get! Have you ever noticed the spout of Valentina hot sauce? There's a smaller hole that's just above where the hot sauce comes out, and that hole is there because it lets the sauce flow smoothly from the bottle. So when you pick up the bottle, you don't have to sit there and violently shake it. What's inside is liberated to come out. If the Milwaukee Bucks were to be compared to a bottle of Valentina hot sauce, which is what I'm getting ready to do, this offseason, they put an extra hole in their spout, and the offense is flowing now. They did this in a couple of ways. First, they signed a forward-thinking coach in Mike Budenholzer that could ease them into a modern mindset offensively. There was plenty of off-season speculation about what the alliance of Coach Bud and Giannis Antetokounmpo might hold for Milwaukee, but our ears were drawn to the haunting laughter of Kawhi and the satisfied chuckling of Celtics fans who thought that the GOAT guarding the bridge to the NBA Finals had finally moved on and stopped blocking their path. It does seem that in some sense we forgot about Milwaukee, or at the very least, underestimated them. Watch and learn, he says. Well, I was watching, know what I saw? <laughs> It's a lie! It behooves your style in some sense to respond to your personnel. And if the gap between your style and your personnel is wide, it behooves you to tweak that personnel and shrink that gap. That's what the Bucks quietly did this offseason. No single move was earth shattering, but their simple tweaks and personnel have done a great deal to let the sauce flow. It's done a ton to open up their offense. They added Brooke Lopez, the man who is always open because the rules of being open don't really apply to him. My man has been stroking it. They added Ursan Ilyasova, a man who runs like an anthropomorphic circus tent covered in molasses, but is still competent enough on offense to sprinkle in some shooting here or there when the ball swung to him. He also might be 50 years old. And they threw in Pat Connaughton and Dante DiVincenzo, two guys who are making the most out of those classic Budenholzer holes or back cuts. These are all guys that can hit open shots, but don't require a high usage rate to be effective, and they don't kill you with inefficiency when the ball comes their way. When you hollow out the middle of the floor the way the Bucks have this season, you're forcing defenders to nervously watch Brogdon, Anacumpo, and Bledsoe, a trio of physical capable drivers, and that creates a good kind of havoc for Milwaukee. Teams that share the ball better tend to get the most effort out of their off-ball cutters, and that's going to create shots. In that sense, it's no surprise that the Bucks are playing better. Look, we're purposefully overreacting to a small sample size, but the statistical swing from last season to the early goings of 2018-19 is remarkable. Here's some wild 2017-18 to 2018-19 changes. The Milwaukee Bucks have gone from 25th to 2nd in 3-point attempts, from 27th to 1st overall in 3-point makes, and from 14th to 2nd in team assists. It could certainly cool off and blow over, but the Bucks have five guys shooting over 40% from three, and it doesn't take a Richie Adubato to notice that the ball has energy out there, and these guys seem to be enjoying themselves. They have created this season the highest percentage of wide open shots in the NBA. For Chris Middleton, in my opinion, one of the more underrated ISO scores in the league, this has led to a shift away from a high volume of mid-range attempts without seeing a big dip in scoring. He's taking fewer of those mid-rangers and more threes, but when Milwaukee needs a big bucket, he's still one of the nastiest middle-of-the-floor ISO guys in the league that you rarely hear people talk about. Defensively, remarkably, the Bucks have been just as good. Their focus has largely been on preventing easy twos around the rim, boasting the second best defensive field goal percentage there. Milwaukee's very often looking to funnel pick and roll ball handlers into the mid range where their exceptional team length is waiting below the foul line to more often than not force a tough shot. But this approach has shown some cracks when it squares off against strong off the bounce shooters like CJ McCollum or Damian Lillard. A problem that's reared its head for Budenholzer teams of the past is that they picked on less equipped teams and then faltered whenever they run up against the inevitable inevitable player coach talent that's hanging around in the playoffs. It's what doomed the 2015 Hawks team that won 60 games, but this Bucks team is more talented than that crew, so it's possible that it could turn out differently. The arms and legs of Giannis Antetokounmpo are still haunting the dreams of opposing players and coaches. 
Around the rim, players as versatile and as efficient as Giannis just don't come around very often. 71.4% of his shots this season have come around the rim, which is pretty normal for Giannis, but that's way above the league average, and he's converting 67.5% of those attempts. He's still likely to pick up a couple charges a game, but the downhill pressure that he puts on opposing defenses leads to easy offense much more frequently than it doesn't. His assist numbers are up, and he's actually improved his rebounding too, averaging 13 total rebounds a game this year as opposed to 10 a game last year. If Giannis can become an above average shooter on his fallaways in the middle of the floor, a shot that he takes a lot, I think that's one way that we could see the Bucks become a very tough out and crunch time in the playoffs. With his length, it's one of the more unguardable shots in basketball, and when playoff games are winding down, that type of offense from Giannis could be a real difference maker, especially when you consider how intent teams are to keep him from slithering into the lane over and over and over. Defensively, Giannis has been just as spectacular. His length and nimbleness put him in position to make plays that other guys can only dream of, and he makes it look relatively ho-hum most of the time. He's in the 98th percentile in block percentage and the 88th percentile in steal percentage, averaging 1.3 blocks and 1.4 steals a game this season. Mmm, I love a good two-handed block. Is this the year that Giannis nabs an MVP? It's possible, but it still feels to me like he's one offensive evolution away from maybe this guy could do it to who is going to stop this guy from doing it. With the west to east migration of some of the NBA's best two-way players and the slow start of the Celtics, it's easy to start to talk yourself into believing in these Milwaukee Bucks. Their most recent road trip to the west coast was, for much of the national NBA audience, a sign that this thing might be for real. They're first in the NBA in late game plus minus, an indicator that they've learned some lessons about staying true to their identity, trusting their approach, and that they understand what it takes to win. All possible signs that a team is potentially leveling up and maturing. They dropped a tough one on the road to the Blazers where some of their defensive deficiencies reared their head, but they came right back and slapped the silicon out of the Oracle Arena crowd by handling the Draymond-less Warriors. Then they lost on a buzzer beater from Lou Williams against an exciting Clippers team and withstood a late game surge from the Nuggets to, impressively, snag the win in Denver. They're 10 and three with the best strength of schedule in the league, so you'd think that this is a credible sample size. Does Coach Bud have allergies? Why does he always look like he's maybe been crying? I'm still a little dubious that they're ultimately going to have enough to take down the Celtics in the playoffs. But it's certainly possible. Let me know if you agree. Hey folks, I appreciate you watching. And if you like this video, click the like button and be sure to subscribe. You can also follow me on Twitter at at jkyleman. Say hey.